So I'm a big picture person, and um, we're, so I'm going to take you through um, media, through land grabs, a reminder of us, uh, of us ourselves of our inalienable rights, and also then talk a little bit more about the Wakamininga Māori government under He Wakaputanga jurisdiction, uh, which I believe is the remedy to us. So we'll be talking about that. Um, there's an awful lot to get through today. That's why I suggest maybe questions are written down. Um, I'm thinking that uh, we won't do a Q&A after this session. We'll just zoom through as fast as I can, and um, uh, maybe just before lunch. But the last session of the day, we'll make sure there's a good gap there, uh, even if you know chairs are being cleared and we're all standing up, just getting those last questions in so that you feel like you've gone with enough information to, to do further research on. So um, uh, a lot of today will be underpinned in uh, these videos, one on YouTube, one on Odyssey, and another one here that's on BitChute. So if you write down the addresses there, or at least their, um, their names, live with uh, CWT, uh, you'll be able to get a little bit more to underpin, because today it's going to be a little bit like a pebble surfing across the lake, uh, so I can get a, a, a bit of a... Um, um, a broader picture in your minds. I think many of us have gone down rabbit holes and we know they go deeper than we could ever in a lifetime discover. But uh, once you do go down these uh, rabbit holes, you realise there's a lot of cross dots, a lot of connections, the same um, players, the same uh, history. Uh, and so that's what I'm kind of bringing. So we're going to be looking at media. We know media is no longer our watchdog, but rather the lapdog of the... Uh, government, or the, those that are governing, should I say, down in Wellington. Um, so, uh, but I'm thinking that it's good to underpin why, what is happening. Because we're looking at a show, as I guess many of you understand. So we're going to unwrap that show, or at least underpin it with a little bit of background history. Uh, and then afterwards, the inalienable rights, so we'll, we'll take it from there. Um, again, uh, we're revolting. That was two years' research. We were in Britain during the Brexit. We hit in, uh, in on that on uh, 2016 when we took our family there. We were there for three years. So we understood what it was like for people to want their sovereignty and independence back. But we also understood what it was like to be so polarised that you wouldn't dare tell anyone that you were a Brexiteer. I was pinned against a wall by a guy that had no idea that I would even be in a position to uh, vote, but uh, the Remainers were very aggressive, um, and usually they seem to be. So that opened my eyes, and uh, so that's two years' research there. When we came back, I was part of NZPP because that was the only party that understood the United Nations as the shop front of everything evil in this world. So I jumped on board, uh, not political at all, believe it or not. I just want my freedom, want my life back, want my children, and my not that I've got grandchildren yet, but be nice one day to be able to have the freedom that I think a lot of the older ones of us here uh, today remember. But, you know, not that we were totally free, but we were a whole lot freer than we are today. And 101 Reasons to Home Educate. Uh, my husband and I home educated our six children. Uh, they didn't go to school. They went, to, uh, our eldest went to university at 16, a discretionary entry, having, you know, just been home educated by me. I bought in a maths curriculum, but everything else was just put together. Our children have done incredibly well. Um, and that is a model for true learning, not that you necessarily have to have them at home, but and with, within the um, uh, Wakamininga Māori government, our Mataronga Council are looking for that real learning, not the schooled Prussian model that we are uh, under at the moment. So uh, the numbers that have home educated uh, have jumped from 7,000 to 11,000 over the last 18 months or so. So it is one of our biggest growing communities. So that's just a little bit of input there. Um, must keep my eye. Have we got a clock somewhere? Perhaps not. Ah, nice one. Okay, so we've lost a bit of time, so I've got to finish at 11. So we might be just going over a bit. But look, we're relaxed. I think that's the one thing in the freedom movement in New Zealand. We're just a family, so you just help yourself, you know? We're all good, we, and, uh, but I'll, I'll try and condense it as quickly as possible and zoom thing through things. Now, 
You don't have to be a Christian. We're not talking about being a Christian. But the one thing we need to understand, if we're going to understand why the West is being hammered the way it is, that the West is, is a philosophy or a philosophical base is Protestant Christianity. Europe is Catholicism. The East is Islam. But the West... America, Britain, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and a few others, we sit on a Protestant base that tells us that we as individuals are very important. We are the highest jurisdiction under God. Uh, those other models, we're just part of the whole. We're just part of the consensus, the, the more communistic model. So we must understand this, and what they're trying to do at the moment is take the Christianity out of the West. Now, there is a guy that we, um, uh, Dawkins, uh, Richard Dawkins, we, we talk about him as being a hostile witness. He is no friend to Protestant Christianity. But, you know, he is even worried that once Christianity, Protestant Christianity leaves the planet, uh, that something worse is going to come in. And I think over the last couple of years, we've, we've understand exactly what he is talking about. It's the bulwark to something worse because, again, it's the only philosophical base that says myself as a flesh and blood being am very important. And from that blessed place, I then reach out to society and make sure that those that are vulnerable around me are not uh, slipping through the cracks. Where communism, uh, model, Catholicism, Islam is uh, the state tells you uh, and steals from you to provide for the, the wider scene. So there's two different ways of looking at it. So he's seeing, you know, he doesn't see that uh, um, Protestant Christianity is blowing up anything. And that reminded me when I was putting this together about uh, the old little rhyme, you know, remember, remember the 5th of December, gunpowder, treason and plot. We see no reason why gunpowder, treason should ever be forgot. And that takes us, of course, straight away to uh, Guy Fox. Now, I've got a little picture here that some of you will be able to see. I'll just move out of the way. That's in Lewis. My, that's a photograph taken by my daughter, her fiancé's house in Lewis in the UK. This is the big Guy Fox parade that's annually there. And it uh, has changed, or at least the narrative has changed, uh, which is where, what we're going to dialogue about today. But the number one reason why it must never be forgot is because that gunpowder plot was to take away our inalienable rights. Uh, supposed to be blowing up Parliament, sure. Uh, take out uh, James I, sure. But that day as well, they were going to be processing and ratifying the... the uh, putting together of the 1611, uh, well, what we know as the 1611 King James Bible. If you know anything about common law, most of you will. The King James Bible is a very, very important Bible. Uh, it, it, it ensures our inalienable rights, unlike any other Bible will do. So I'm talking about media this morning, so we have to kind of move into what that might look like as far as, you know, what am I talking about? Bibles, all these uh, fine men here in the, uh, plotting their, their uh, um, parliament uh, terrorism were all part of the Jesuit order, which uh, is an order that came out of the Council of, First Council of Trent, uh, after the Reformation, uh, just over 500 years ago. So what, 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 what about this Bible? The, Bi the Holy Bible is our handbook to freedom. And uh, it's no um, surprise that in the 1970s, 60s particularly, 1970s, that all these other Bibles came out. I've got one quote there from a uh, Abbot Leone who was uh, overhearing the Jesuit plots and he uh, wrote uh, what he heard uh, and, and then it was translated into English and the, they were determined to have the King James Bible gone. Um, you can see here uh, Billy Graham, whoever's been puffed up, regardless what area of media, and uh, as an evangelist, you could say that's media, particularly when it, came, it comes to the truth of, of our inalienable rights. You can see him there with his uh, paw, along with uh, Manly Hall, a man that was uh, uh, vigorous with the destruction of the King James Bible. It had to go because it was a snake. It was going to bite them 
because our freedoms are entrenched in that Bible. You don't have to be a Christian. We're not talking about that. We're talking about um, a, a, a book that, uh, regardless who you are, gives you that model of freedom. And it's the West that is the only real model that talks about uh, or that allows people from different uh, spiritual expressions, different religions. They're not a threat to the Protestant world. They're a threat to Islamic world. They're a threat to uh, uh, Catholic world, but not to Protestant world because we allow people those freedoms to believe what they want. Um, the Haley's Handbook... Um, um, Billy Graham's ministries got hold of that. They got the copyright. They took out all the uh, Jesuit um, uh, warnings out of that and this revamped it again to crush the media, uh, exposing the truth. Um, we have up here Alberto Rivera. He was a Jesuit. He was poisoned for his whistleblowing um, knowledge uh, and he said in the 60s that when... Uh, the President of the United States is inaugurated on the west side of the Capitol, you will know the Jesuit order is in every Christian stream in the world. Ronald Reagan was the first uh, president to be inaugurated on the west side of the Capitol in the 1980s. Prior to that, it was always the east side. So that was the signal. And from then, uh, it really took on a life of its own. And you might think, well, what does it matter? Just very briefly, it matters a lot because all the modern Bibles are taken from what's called the minority text. Two texts, one found in the Vatican, one found in a Roman Catholic uh, monastery. And uh, during the elections, when I spoke to people that were Christians, they all said to me, well, most of them said to me, oh, but we've got to obey our government. Well, you need to get back into the King James Bible and you'll realise actually you don't obey tyranny. So uh, getting back to our boy uh, Guido Fox, or Guy Fox as we know him, uh, and many of us will have seen V for Vendetta, that is Guy Fox. It's the story of Guy Fox. But typically in this narrative that we're all a part of today, and media is a very strong driver of what we think and what we believe, we find in this story Guy Fox was the hero. Um, uh, but he is not because by the end of the movie, you'll see everyone wearing Guy Fox masks. That's subliminally telling the, the people that are watching that movie, in the end, you will all believe the narrative. There'll be no independent thought whatsoever. So we quote from a 33-degree uh, Freemason uh, in the X, which uh, you see quite a bit, but particularly in this movie, is uh, change or transformation. We are being changed. That's what this COVID thing's all about. This is what this mask ritual's all about. We're transforming or being transformed, getting ready for the new, um, the new order. Uh, and their Messiah is not uh, Jesus Christ of the Bible. Their Messiah is Osiris or Lucifer or Satan. So everything, uh, and you'll hear me say it a bit uh, today, and this is not bashing Roman Catholics, as individuals, if we love the Lord and we've accepted him into our lives, we are on that path to salvation. We have that um, assurance. We're talking about the organization or the, um, the Vatican or the papacy. And our very first uh, Jesuit was Ignatius of Loyola. Uh, and uh, you can see here that, um, with the IHS, we're told that means in his service, it, is mean, uh, it means Isis, Horus, and Set. Because Catholicism, uh, not individual Catholics, but Catholicism is the ancient mystery religion with a very thin Christian veil. Everything the elites do is just either rebranded so you don't find its genesis or it just has a very thin veil over it. Like take the mRNA poison needle. It's a vaccine, don't you know? It's always just veiled in something uh, good, uh, humane, um, you know, for our, for our good, really. Uh, the, we uh, have the black pope here. Uh, Ignatius was the first black pope. Most people don't know about him. We only know about the white pope. Uh, the black pope uh, rules the world, if you're looking for the person that rules the world. But, of course, there are many, many, many others that are way behind the shadows. We will never know their names. I've got some of the houses of them, and we are revolting. 
I uh, found another old uh, book that, I, that uh, someone had written. Uh, I don't think it was Vipers of Venice, but one of those kind of books uh, written in the 1800s that gave some of the houses that are of those noble bloodlines that we hear about. And uh, this is the Black Pope, the White Pope. First time in history, we've got two white popes alive, we've got two black popes alive, live, because they're in their end game, and it's time we woke up really, really, really fast. Now, media. Um, the uh, church uh, and all these uh, 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 letters that are put out and uh, bulls that are written, um, it's all about owning the media. I won't read this uh, through because we haven't got time this morning, but it's talking about how they, uh, the Roman Catholic Church, will own the media, control the media, get their people into the media, and whatever guys that will be. And no, they're not going to say, oh, it's the Jesuits, I'm here, I'm your Jesuit representative. It's going to be a lot more nefarious than that. The other name for the Genesis, uh, Jesuits is the Society of Jesus. Again, just a lovely little Christian name, nothing to see here, people, but it's anything from the, the truth as we will find out as today uh, uh, continues. The 1960s, we, we have here, at the same time, this is uh, from uh, the papacy, at the same time, we urge that the faithful, and particularly those who are militant, that's code for Jesuits, they are the militant order, in the cause of Catholic action, uh, be suitably instructed so they may appreciate the need for giving these officers uh, their willing, united, and effective support. Pope John VI amplified Miranda Porosis with the decree uh, inter mirifica. Um, it's the church birthright to use and own all media, basically, is what they're saying there. That's what they see. It's their birthright. And we'll work through today why they, that is so and why somehow we seem to agree. But a lot of what we are combating today came out of Operation Paperclip Clip. after World War II or before it even finished. They realised that the uh, uh, Third Reich was um, ending. They were already organising the Fourth Reich. They were already organising Pan Europe at that time. Uh, and they were starting to get their Nazis out and into South America and into North America, renamed re uh, uh, and new passports. And it was the, um, the Nazis that were um, uh, funded and given their marching orders by the Jesuit order. Uh, you can see the uh, priests up here, uh, Hal Hitler. They were all told they're on board with this guy uh, across the board. So hundreds, if not thousands, came in. And the uh, Nazis became the CIA. They, in the 40s, the CIA was established. It was basically the SS that's still here today because it just went underground. We're, we're still in World War II. It's gone underground. And uh, they're talking about the, the fourth uh, industrial revolution or the fourth world. Uh, we're, we're in the fourth Reich. That's what they're trying to do to us now. Also, they brought out um, Operation Mockingbird, and um, it was fully implemented CIA program to spread disinformation throughout America. Uh, and if you weren't with the narrative, you were put sideways. So this top-down control that our democracies in the West has uh, found itself in is uh, at our demise that we've allowed people uh, the authority over us. Uh, the, um, it, it goes right across into social media as well. And uh, the papacy always comes out with statements making sure that uh, they're supporting the, uh, the elites uh, as they uh, make decisions through the World Economic Forum and Davos and particularly the United Nations with all their different organisations there. So it's about um, uh, back uh, in the Dark Ages, a thousand-year Dark Ages, it was said that freedom of conscience was an insult to God and man. And th they've uh, got a few different quotes, but here's this one here, particularly talking about our spirituality. Because they're after not just a one world order, they're after a one world religion. And we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go forward. This, uh, I'm not going to read this, but this is the Congressional uh, record in 1917. Uh, that Congressman Galloway uh, um, announced. Um, 
And this is about M Morgan, JP Morgan, or the House of Morgan, uh, propped up and uh, funded also through House of Rockefeller, both of them funded through House of Rothschild. They're all uh, Jesuit adjutors. It was Morgan that um, create or had built the uh, Titanic, built to sink, and there's a story there in its own right. But also, how do we capture these, uh, the narrative of the day? So they put uh, 12 men to the job of uh, finding out how um, we, they could control the narrative. And um, the, the bottom line is they selected 179 newspapers uh, and they whittled that down to five. Then they put their people in so that the editors and anyone that was uh, in um, the hierarchy of those newspapers determined not so much what the story was, but how it was going to be crafted. They're very good with uh, subliminal messaging and neuro uh, linguistic programming. CIA are, are perfectionists at it. And over the uh, role now, over 100 years later, we are pretty much under uh, the spell of whatever they write and create for us. So um, they, this way they were also able to control the military complex, the industrial military complex, which, by the way, is the Vatican's private army. We always blame America for starting wars. No, no, they're being used. They don't understand it. The average person doesn't understand it. But uh, Washington, D.C. is uh, within America but is not owned by America. It is owned by the Vatican. It is their military seat. The, the guy that uh, produced this, John F. Halen, he uh, died uh, mysteriously. Uh, you don't uh, give out this sort of information and think that you're going to still hang around for very long. But here's just a quick thing. It's probably even changed now. I think there's still been a little bit more uh, buying up of each other. But 1983, uh, 50 companies kind of owed the media. And by 2012, it was six. Uh, British um, uh, stats are pretty much the same. So here we have House of Rockefeller. He's always there. He is the guy that bought enormous acreages, uh, acreage in New York and invited the UN. America didn't want them on their soil. The UN needed to be on their soil. They can take out America and Britain. They can take out the rest of the West. So these two countries are really important to us. Uh, so they invited the United Nations in, uh, and uh, this uh, symbol, United Nations symbol, is not latitude and longitude. That is a spider's web or a net. They have us. And the laurels are ancient mystery, worship to the uh, ancient gods and goddesses. And it's no surprise that uh, uh, the Pope is now the spokesperson, uh, religious spokesperson for the world, uh, for, and it sits at United Nations because Catholicism is ancient, the core of it is ancient mystery religion with pantheism, which will make more sense as we go forward today as well. So they had to capture everything. Uh, their, um, uh, Joe Kennedy, JFK's father, a uh, Jesuit adjutor, was given the job to uh, create um, Paramount, uh, and, and that birthed Hollywood. Again, keep the narrative. And this goes back to, uh, as you'll see in the background, a little old uh, image there. This goes back to what was known as Jesuit drama or Jesuit, um, uh, well, Je we'll call it Jesuit drama. Uh, that's one of the reasons why Shakespeare wasn't allowed in uh, London, you remember, and he had to get, put the globe just outside because the early Brits were very, very concerned that the, of Jesuit drama and the propaganda that was uh, used through that. But this is what Hollywood is. Hollywood is the witch's uh, wood that witch's wands are made out of. And Paramount picture, you can see the, the stars that you'll often see around uh, Mary uh, in Catholicism. Remember, she's not Mary. She's Ishtar or Isis because she's the ancient mystery goddess with a Christian veil put over her. Here are Columbia pictures. We see Ishtar here as well with the light of, or the eye of Lucifer, the light of Lucifer, the Masonic steps and that little bit of blue around her, uh, which is where we get our blue movies from, because these goddesses were always debauched. Uh, and that's why uh, Catholicism has Mary in blue, because she's Isis, the debauched. Or, and, and same with um, uh, Liberty, Libertas, 
we'll learn a bit more about her. And over here for DreamWorks, you've got a Horus and Osiris uh, imagery. And it's all to take us down. It's not there to entertain us, it's there to uh, propagandize. And we get this from uh, uh, Jack uh, Valenti himself, that the list of actors employed by these papal criminals is the most impressive. Hollywood is merely the Jesuit theater, nothing more. Jesuit drama, Jesuit theater, same thing. So we're being, we're being, we're being had. Uh, I boycotted the uh, movie industry about eight or nine years ago, mainly because the, the, the pedophilia, I thought they're not having my money. I do watch movies if I get them from secondhand stores, so I'm not totally, um, uh, you know, Puritan, but uh, I will not go to the movies. Uh, ben Affleck, he knows uh, exactly the way it rolls. And that's why when you see any of these kind of cartoony things like The Simpsons, they always announce what is about to happen. So 9-11, there it is. Lots and lots of money is going to be made from that. And there are many, many uh, uh, other things that The Simpsons particularly uh, announced ahead of time. Not because they, were, uh, they had the, the, you know, the crystal ball, but because they are connected to the people that are creating the history going forward. Same with all their big epic movies as well, like uh, Kingdom of Heaven. They said, oh, it's just so accurate. Well, it's not particularly accurate at all. And even um, uh, Muslim people were irate about it. It put Christianity as the villain and Islam as the uh, victims and as the heroes. But even still, uh, Muslims were not at all happy. Then we have people that we all know well, um, uh, Martin Sheen, that's not his real name. Often uh, within the elites, even Adern, is that her real name? We've got to ask that question, don't we? But Sheen was a, a um, notorious Jesuit, and so uh, uh, Ramon uh, decided to change his name in uh, reflection of that. And it was Martin Sheen that did the geographical um, documentary on that lucky priest, you know, priest uh, Father Brown that, that didn't go on the Titanic uh, because Sheen is in on the reason why the Titanic had to go down uh, and then part of the narrative that we are led to believe. Uh, uh, here we go, Jesuit theatre, Jesuit drama, just got that online um, just a few weeks ago, so it's alive and well. The uh, um, papacy, uh, Miranda Porosis, again, men must be brought to a closer communion with one another. That's consensus. That's what that's about. They're saying that no longer are we individuals. They must become socially minded. So I've got to be part of the whole. Uh, these technical arts um, can achieve this aim far more easily than the printed word. Mwahaha. And it's very hard to get people to read now. We've been so dumbed down. Um, the Catholic Church is keenly desirous that these means be converted into spreading and advancement of everything that can be truly uh, be called good. Um, that's their good, by the way. Yeah. So when they call us uh, human cattle, human cannon fodder, that's their good. So we get to the point where, and I think we can all agree, that um, before they bop drums, they drop ideas. Their, their whole propaganda machine, and this just doesn't go into to the newspapers and into the television, into the movies. This also goes into the education of our children. It goes into just about anything that we read. Uh, textbooks since the early 1900s when Rockefeller took over education, took over publishing, took over the whole nine yards, even medicine. And you wonder why doctors aren't standing up for us because they're so propagandized they don't understand. They've been taught how to prescribe. They've been taught very little else. So we hear this chap, he's uh, Sutton, uh, Anthony C. Sutton. He's an a, a author, a professor, and he warns of three levels of uh, information. And the first one is what the government will tell us. 
and out it comes. Now, it may not be true. They try and uh, make sure it fits with the last announcement they made. But, you know, if, if they get it wrong, they'll, they'll try and fix it up as best they can. Sometimes they just don't even bother these days. They'll just say two different contrary things in one speech. Uh, and it just seems to go over everyone's head now because we're so used to looking to government for all those wise words and being the only source of truth. Uh, then you have the second level of communication, which is the media. They get their communication from the government. And they might look to critique it and push back a little bit, but they don't do any digging, particularly now. There's no real investigative journalists left in the country. So they just take the le uh, lazy route and they revamp uh, and critique what the government gives uh, them. So, you know, it's still not the truth. And then there's the third level which is us. It is based on new documented evidence that has been rooted out on a research point of view. So that might be doctors standing on science here in New Zealand now and many of the other whistleblowers uh, through politics, uh, um, science, um, uh, medicine. Those are the people that are rooting this out. You have to know where to look. They do. You have to know about its existence. You have to demand it. You have to get it declassified. And it's very hard for us to do that. I think there is a bit more of awareness now. But with the uh, control of uh, social media, it's very hard to get that message out. And I, Goebel, Goebbels, who was the um, uh, head of the propaganda machine in Nazi Germany, uh, he, I think he's got it perfectly sussed. Think of the press as a great keyboard on which the government can play. Says it all. And just very quickly, uh, just to show you, if you step outside the narrative, if you're too challenging like Peter Williams was, you can say goodbye to your job. So Robinson, uh, his, his slot was pulled because he denied uh, that there was a reset. He called it a conspiracy theory, even though the um, big posters were all over New Zealand talking about the reset. And Adern had gone in 2018 to the, on a tour of the Pacific, calling it the Pacific Reset. So it all kind of came unglued. So poor old Robinson, a bit of a, a loose cannon for the government, and his slot was, was totally pulled. So just looking back at uh, the CIA, now when they say America, uh, we're talking the West. Don't think that we're a, a, a country on our own right anymore. We are totally globalised. They just haven't told us, but I think we're getting to understand that. But when we're, this is the CIA director, okay? That's their aim, disinformation and misinformation. And is it what the new one is, malinformation? It just, it's even been created, isn't it? Here's another CIA um, uh, official, uh, and it's, their function is to keep the world unstable, and that's the world we live in. It's, it's a very unstable world for us today. We've got young people that are feeling their lives are passing them by. We've got um, six children, as I said, our oldest is 30, our youngest is 19, and, you know, in the prime of life, and they're just seeing it go by. I say to them, at least it's not a hot war, you know? Just hang in there, uh, and we'll see this through. In the 1960s, there was a Dr. Day that uh, invited other... He was an insider. He invited other doctors to a secret conference uh, telling them what was going to happen through the second half of the 20th century so that they wouldn't be alarmed. There was a doctor there, Dr. Dunnigan, and he, no one was allowed to take notes, but when he got home, he kind of put down what he could remember. And Dr. Dunnigan was interviewed in the 1980s, uh, and you can uh, hear that recording, uh, I, I think still on YouTube. I downloaded it from there a few years ago. And again, in the 60s, in the 50s, in the 40s, all this destruction of the West and uh, the, the ungluing of the um, morality of Protestant Christianity was all to destroy us from within and create an environment, to create a culture that would just take on anything. Because this is the way it goes. Your politics is downstream of culture, and culture is downstream of religion. 
So that's why the West is bombarded. It was Protestant Christianity that had to be destroyed. We can't have everyone thinking they have inalienable rights and they're very important as an individual. So that's been the number one task and to bring in the globalist one world religion in its different forms. Then we have the culture, and of course our culture has changed. Um, we seem to accept abortion, and now, you know, uh, abortion right up to birth, and that brings us to uh, the politics, that we can have a political system that says, yeah, actually we're okay with abortion up to birth. That's because our religion, our philosophical base, our morality has slipped, our culture has slipped, so then they can just bring in whatever and no, well, hardly anyone blinks an eyelid. And this was all choreographed back in the uh, 1950s and 60s. This is um, a, a, um, a uh, document, Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. It was uh, um, found on an IBM uh, copier in the 1980s, but this was spoken about in the first Bilderberger meeting in 1954. It's called Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. So we are in a war, and they use silent weapons like education system, like fluoridation in the water, like pharmaceuticals, and it goes on, geoengineering. They're all silent weapons. Uh, we are the enemy, and so it's time now that, as I said before, there's no charger coming over the, over the horizon. We now need to stand up and put on our, our army boots uh, and uh, uh, equip ourselves and fight this battle. Uh, they have... Uh, decided in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, 80s when this was exposed that television would be the way uh, to destroy us, sabotage our mental activities, provide a low-quality program of public education. That's the United Nations Common Core Curriculum that Helen Clark brought into New Zealand in the early 2000s. Everything uh, is, being, is uh, dumbing us down. Uh, television, even our news, if you're still listening to mainstream media news, they target a 12-year-old mentality. That's where they're aiming all their news. And if you haven't listened to it for ages, like I haven't in the odd time where I'm somewhere and it's on, um, you, you can tell, you can hear the belligerence in their voice, like they're treating you like you're an absolute idiot. They're quite aggressive uh, in the way they speak. Uh, and you, know, you may not notice that first off. Uh, diversion summary, media, keep the adult public attention diverted, diverted away from real social issues and captivated by matters of no real importance. And uh, other places in this document, it says keep the people busy, 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 so we never get a chance to assess and think and use our critical thinking. So we get into the situation now that um, we have... Um, uh, actors, um, and this is the same lady. She's in three different uh, venues in America. She's known as a crisis actress. She's brought on to say, oh, it was awful, like she was right in the middle of it, and she was lucky to survive. Uh, she, you can, many of them actually, she's just one, I just thought I'd pop up there. Same woman, different uh, locale in America, completely different situation. Same in Britain, same here. And this whole idea that the, the uh, journalists get out there on the, on the battlefield now, half the time it's green screen. So just to link us back to uh, uh, Hitler's time, because they were funded from the Vatican and uh, choreographed uh, uh, from the Vatican, from the Jesuits. And I think our Marky boy here has uh, given us uh, a perfect idea of what Facebook's all about. But remember, we're, we're now in the Fourth Reich. Um, uh, here, what does Goebbels say? If you tell a lie big enough and keep repeating it, people will eventually come to believe it. The lie can be maintained only for such a time as the state can shield the people from political, economic, and military consequences. In the end, the lie does crumble. It's so heavy, it implodes upon itself. And we're kind of at that situation now, which is a perfect time for us to have the confidence to rise. Uh, Facebook, uh, the movers and shakers and the founders, 
uh, were very clear then and very clear now that is, is addictive. So first we get the people addicted, then we start limiting what they're allowed to say, then we're limiting what they're allowed to see, then we put firewalls around countries and keep them isolated from one another so no one has any idea and you're just listening to mainstream media and you're thinking that is reality. And so we get this sort of thing on Facebook. <laughs> and Paul Watson, uh, who pulled out a Greenpeace because he was so disgusted with the lies, uh, he's, he also said it doesn't matter if it's true or not, it's whether the people think it's true. So we've got a lot of people we are still got to wake up. We can try. If they're not going to wake up, don't use your energy. Just love them and move on. Uh, again, of course, the Vatican always steps in, uh, and we don't want... Um, hate speech now, and that helps the reasoning why they're being a little bit more careful. But recently we've got the new, uh, the good censor. This was a leaked document from Google. Uh, and on page 85, admits that Google and other tech platforms now control the majority of online conversations. Yep, have done for a few years now. And shift towards censorship. So they're limiting the information we can get, which of course also dumbs us down. Back to Goebel, uh, a lie told once remains a lie, but once you keep telling it, it becomes the truth. And Adern wants to be our only source of truth. Uh, Goebel says it's uh, propaganda's task. Um, it's not propaganda's task to be intelligent. And you know, I think once you wake up, you realise there's no intelligence coming out of uh, Wellington nor the media. It's just a means to success. So we get this, uh, it's amusing, I think this, uh, there we go, I'm on time too, I've raced through that. Uh, this is hilarious, I love it, so I thought I'd end with this this morning before we have our break, because this is clearly what it's all about. We could say a brave um, doctor is saving the people from COVID by giving us this beautiful vaccine. I mean, that's basically what this is saying, and um, we need to be a little bit more awake than that. And remember that critical thinking, that uh, uh, our self-conscious uh, uh, and uh, determination of our, our, our way in life is an insult to God and man, and that's what they're trying to bash out of us at all costs. And particularly the last 20 years of young people coming out of school are a hard group. Look at us here. I'm not sure if there's anyone under 20 uh, within the Wakamininga Māori government, we'd love to see a, um, a council of young people that are ready to take uh, the leadership for tomorrow. Um, but that's going to be a little bit hard at this stage, I do believe, A, to get them to wake up, and B, to get them to engage. Uh, but that, that's the uh, little um, presentation I wanted to do on media just to set the scene today so we understand everything we're seeing, everything we're hearing. It's just a show. It's Jesuit drama. So thank you.